Good evening. I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News update. Five days and counting to the Biden presidential inauguration, and there is a massive security presence in D.C. In the wake of the Capitol Hill insurrection, up to 20,000 National Guard troops will be on hand. Many streets are closed. 13 metro stations are shut down, and 26 Ramada bus routes have been curtailed. Officials say Americans should enjoy the January 20th inauguration. However, because of public security and health concerns, they want you to view the Biden ceremony from the comfort of your home. We cannot allow a recurrence of the chaos and illegal activity that the United States and the world witnessed last week. Our democracy is built on the rule of law, and the Secret Service workforce is dedicated and committed to uphold its oath to the Constitution and assure that its vital, no-fail mission regarding the security of the presidential inauguration and the peaceful transfer of power is carried out. The Justice Department's Inspector General launches a probe of the Capitol Hill insurrection. The office will look at how the department and the FBI handle intelligence leading up to the riots last week. It specifically will determine whether information about potential violence was shared with Capitol Police and other law enforcement agencies. The Washington Post reported recently that an FBI field office in Norfolk sent out a bulletin warning of possible violence before the attack. Now, meantime, citing court records, the Associated Press reports today that the extremists had plans to, quote, capture and assassinate elected officials. And the domestic dispute turns deadly, and a 21-year-old man is arrested for that murder. This is Kenny Aguilar of New Carrollton. Police say he fatally stabbed his mother's boyfriend during an argument early yesterday morning. The victim has been identified as 39-year-old Francis Perez Fuentes. Fuentes Aguilar and his mother lived in the same home where the incident occurred on the 7600 block of Riverdale Road. Aguilar has been charged with first-degree murder. Well, COVID-19 has killed 45 Marylanders in the last 24 hours. That's according to the state's Department of Health. The agency also reports more than 2,900 new cases in the last day. That brings the total number of cases to more than 320,000. Nearly 62,000 COVID-19 infections have been reported right here in Prince George's County. And as the county's COVID-19 numbers continue to rise, Prince George's County extends the indoor dining ban at restaurants. County Executive Angela Alsobrooks made that announcement yesterday. Indoor dining at banquets, receptions, conference centers, and hotel meeting rooms is also prohibited. However, outdoor dining will continue to be limited to 50 percent capacity. Restaurants can continue to provide takeout meals and curbside service to customers. Well, President-elect Joe Biden unveils an expensive and ambitious relief plan. The $1.9 trillion economic and health care relief package is aimed at addressing immediate needs. It is called the American Rescue Plan. It provides, among other things, $2,000 stimulus checks for Americans. The plan also commits $20 million for a universal vaccination program. Here are some of what Biden said in a speech last night in Wilmington. Moody's, an independent Wall Street firm, said my approach will create more than 18 million good paying jobs. Our rescue and recovery plan is a path forward with both seriousness of purpose and a clear plan with transparency and accountability with a call for unity that is equally necessary. A larger recovery package is expected to follow next month. Well, Maryland officially enters the next phase for COVID-19 vaccinations beginning Monday. Phase 1B includes residents 75 years and older, teachers, those in assisted living and certain group homes, as well as high-risk individuals who are incarcerated. 50,000 doses will be available to providers next week for those elderly populations. In addition, Governor Hogan announcing that Marylanders 65 and older can begin receiving COVID-19 vaccinations later this month. Because of the limited supply of vaccines that we're currently being allocated, uh, these vaccinations will be done on an appointment-only basis at this time. For teachers and education staff, the state superintendent of schools has submitted plans for how each county school system will vaccinate its teachers, and county school system systems will begin implementing those plans in the coming weeks. I'm also pleased to announce uh, tonight that in addition to moving uh, onto, uh, into phase 1B uh, on Monday. We have also accelerated the plan to enable uh, moving into 1C beginning the following Monday. 
January 25th. Uh, 1C, uh, in phase 1C, we will expand and be able to open to all adults uh, between the ages of 65 and 74 anywhere in the state. The state is also launching a pilot program with giant Walmart pharmacies beginning the week of January 25th and will expand to other locations as more vaccines become available. Residents eligible for the vaccine can visit covidvax.maryland.gov. Well, it was 91 years ago today that Martin Luther King Jr. was born in Atlanta. Dr. King, of course, playing a key role in the civil rights movement, helping secure rights for black Americans across the country. This Monday, the nation celebrates the federal King Day holiday. Dr. King, of course, was a man of peace, but this year's celebration comes at a time of deep division in the country, just days after the president of the U.S. was impeached for inciting an insurrection. King Day was signed into law back in 1986 and is celebrated on the third Monday in January. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. More news in just a bit. Stay tuned. Welcome back. The man found guilty of fatally stabbing a Bowie State University student has been sentenced to life in prison. 25-year-old Sean Urbanski was sentenced yesterday. Urbanski stabbed 23-year-old Army Lieutenant Richard Collins III at a bus stop at the University of Maryland in May 2017. Prosecutors wanted life in prison without the possibility of parole. Urbanski will be eligible for parole after 15 years. Hate kills. It's the same type of hate that killed this young man, First Lieutenant Richard Collins III, and it cannot and will not be tolerated. What we know is that oftentimes hate is fueled by social media. His killer was on Alt-Right Nation's Facebook groups and other social media chat groups that shared racist images, racist discussions, but he fueled what was already in his heart. And the night that he took this man's life, life as he knows it was going to be over. We're gonna fight on. Mm -hmm. We will not be quiet because this scourge of hate has cost my family way too much. Mm -hmm. And it's costing many, many people in America. Meantime, Brave Boy says she will host a town hall meeting to discuss hate in America next month. Well, Greenbelt police are asking for your help in a critical missing person case. This is 17-year-old Ishan Young. He was last seen on January 5th on the 9100 block of Spring Hill Lane. Police say the teen suffers from depression and is off his medication. Any more information on his whereabouts is asked to call police. That number 301-474-7200. Well, county police are investigating a shooting that left two people dead. Now the victim's relatives are asking for your help. The incident happening in the 8600 block of Old Ardmore Road in Landover at 1130 p.m. on December 12th. The victims are 22-year-old Leon Frazier of D.C. and 27-year-old Shantara Sheffield of Virginia. She wanted to uh, do party planning. She just was, like I said, a free spirit, a loving person, always smiling. Everybody feeling the pain of him not just being here. You know what I mean? He was the life of the party. He was like the sunshine. When he liked to go and walk to a room, he liked a room up. He wasn't hanging out like he used to. And he was supposed to start on Monday welding school. If you have any information, call 1-866-411-TIPS. And the National Volunteer Organization wants Maryland lawmakers to take, take up what they call common sense gun legislation. Some of the top priorities for Moms Demand Action include overriding Governor Larry Hogan's veto of legislation requiring background checks in all long gun sales. The group also wants laws enacted that deal with police reform and ghost guns. We will be supporting uh, some kind of legislation that would ban ghost guns. These are guns that you can make yourself at home, uh, DIY guns that you can you know, purchase and, and um, assemble parts or print parts at home. And again, the big problem with this is it uh, lets you get around background checks, which again is just a foundation of what we think we need to do to reduce gun violence. The group plans on holding a virtual advocacy day on the 28th. For more information, visit momsdemandaction.org.
And as we reported yesterday, the state chapter of the ACLU has released its priorities for the 2021 General Assembly session. At the top of the agenda is police reform, including repealing the Police Officers Bill of Rights. The ACLU says reforms would improve the lives of Marylanders, make laws more equitable, and oversight more transparent. Right now, it's a tremendous time of change, and it's a tremendous time where uh, the legislature has an opportunity to be responsive to the people, to be responsive to uh, what's been going on in the cries that, that we've been hearing um, and, and the actions of organized protest and uh, uh, civil disobedience um, that we've seen. And I'm not referring to you know what we saw last week in DC. I'm talking about uh, things uh, when, when people were uh, peacefully protesting throughout the summer, uh, making their voices heard, uh, and their outrage heard with regard to the disparate application of the law um, based on uh, people's color, race, uh, and gender. Now, police reform is not the only issue the ACLU has on its legislative agenda. What other issues are we talking about? So we're always going to be looking at freedom of speech issues um, and issues that with regard to election law and voting rights and expansion therein. Um, but we're also focused in education. We know that there is an override of the uh, Kerwin bill that um, funding uh, formula for education, we know that the legislature has to override Governor Hogan's veto. The legislative session began on Wednesday. Well, working smoke alarms save lives. That's the message coming from the Prince George's County Fire Department. Emergency personnel are reminding everyone to make sure your smoke alarms are working. County law requires that there should be a 10-year sealed smoke detector on every floor of a home, including bedrooms. From our standpoint and everybody's standpoint, safety, there's no nothing more important than having a smoke alarm. It alerts you to anything that's going on. It alerts you early, especially if you're sleeping, to let you know when to get out of a house. So 53% of the um, home fires have a working smoke detector in their house. So if everybody had a working smoke detector, it would allow us or allow the people to get out of the home earlier and really drastically reduce the amount of um, home fire deaths. Officials say they had to halt providing free smoke detectors to the county because of COVID restrictions. Well, 2020, of course, a year of extremes. There was the pandemic, social unrest, droughts, and wildfires. Yesterday, climate experts from NASA and NOAA released their annual assessment of global temperatures over the last year. NASA scientist Rachel Tilling talks about where 2020 ranks in the long term rise of global temperatures. 2020, according to the NASA data that's just been released, was actually the hottest year on record. So it just narrowly edged out 2016, which held the previous record. And although we would expect to see some variations year to year, some years slightly warmer, some a bit cooler, what really matters is the long-term trend. And long-term global temperatures are increasing. And actually, the last seven years now have been the seven hottest years on record. We saw the hurricanes. There was a record-breaking number of storms and 13 hurricanes during Atlantic hurricane season. Smoke from wildfires, even on the West Coast, reached me here, even in Washington, D.C. I remember that very clearly. But also things like drought and an increase in storms. And you might even notice it in your local weather in regions that aren't as affected, say slightly more rainfall, or you might have noticed that the summer felt a little bit longer. And again, long term, you'll start to notice those changes becoming more apparent. NASA and NOAA say understanding long term changes is vital to our interaction with the environment. Now on to the weather forecast for the next three days. Tonight, expect rain this evening with a low of around 34 degrees. Saturday, partly sunny with a chance of rain and snow throughout the day. Temps reaching a high near 43, a low around 32. Sunday, mostly sunny with a high near 46 and a low around 31. And on Monday, mostly sunny with a high near 44 and a low of 29 degrees. And now for the community calendar, the Prince George's County Board of Education is asking for your input on the proposed fiscal year 2022 operating budget. There will be two virtual meetings to attend. The first session is Tuesday at 5 p.m. The second session takes place uh, Tuesday the 2nd of February at 5 p.m., followed by a public hearing at 7 p.m. Residents can register to speak up until 3 p.m. on the day of the hearing. To view the budget proposal, visit pgcps.org. And that's our news for tonight. We'll see you next Tuesday. Good night.